Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin. I thought it would be interesting to take a look at what we know about great apes and game cameras. I came across an interesting study in current biology conducted by the Max Planck Institute for Anthropology. The study is called Novelty Response of Wild African Apes to Camera Traps. The study was crafted to quantify how great apes in equatorial Africa respond to novelty stimulus. The novelty stimulus, or new objects, was in the form of camera traps. The three great ape species comprised of seven groups of bonobo, 13 groups of chimpanzee, and 23 groups of gorilla. The study states that the exact number of individuals within these groups are unknown. Novelty stimulus, in the form of camera traps, were placed in their known habituation ranges. These populations were allegedly not familiar with camera traps. The seven groups of bonobo were recorded on the camouflaged video cameras a total of 119 times. Of the 119 times the bonobo were captured on camera, the cameras were acknowledged, or at least looked at, by the bonobo 97 times, or 82% of the time. So 82% of the time that the bonobo were in the field of view of a camera, they were aware of the camera, or noticeably responding to it, in some way. Of these 97 times the camera was observed, the camera was touched three times, the camera was approached 14 times, the bonobo retreated from the camera 15 times, and the bonobo were visibly startled by the camera 16 times, and the bonobo raised alarm to alert others of the camera seven times. Of 13 groups of chimpanzee, there were 1867 camera image events. Only 461 recordings represent the chimpanzee looking at or reacting to the camera at all. So just to be clear, because I know this is a lot of information, of 1867 times the chimpanzee were caught on camera, they were reacting to the camera only 461 times. So 25% of the time that the chimps are being recorded, they are reacting to the camera. Of these 461 image events, wherein the chimpanzee interacted with the novelty stimulus in the form of game cameras, the camera was touched 61 times, or 13% of the time, the cameras were visibly approached 36 times, or 8% of the time, the cameras were actively retreated from 30 times, the cameras startled the chimps 39 times, and a chimp made an alarm call or alarm display 14 times or 3% of the time. The gorilla had 23 groups and contained the most individuals to catalog, yet the gorilla had only 92 camera events. Of these 92 times gorilla were caught in frame, they reacted to the camera traps 53 times, or 58% of the time. Of these 53 times that gorilla observed the camera traps, they touched the cameras three times, they only approached one time, they retreated from the camera traps 10 times, and they were noticeably startled by the camera traps ten times. And they displayed an alarm call or alarm display seven times. Of course, this study leaves a lot to the imagination. At first I was confused how the chimpanzee and gorilla touched the camera more often than they approached the camera, considering that the cameras took video footage. How could they touch the camera without being recorded approaching it? After scouring the methodologies, I figured out that there were more touches than approaches because both Gorilla and Chimp often approached from behind or from the periphery of the camera's field of view. Inconclusively, but potentially, in an attempt to not approach it head-on. As may be expected with a snake or some other object they may be wary of. Chimpanzee reacting to the cameras 25% of the time does not indicate that they are less observant than the other subjects. Rather, it indicates that they are the least likely to be cautious of new stimulus. Chimps underwhelmingly react to the camera, not because they didn't notice it, but because they tend to be bold, and likely, quickly recognized that it is not a threat, and therefore, quickly determined that they can ignore the cameras. This is attributed to the quote, many eyes hypothesis, stating that the more members of a group are present, the less fear the group exhibits. This is supported by the near impossibility of using game cameras to record orangutan, who are solitary. The study notes that orangutan being solitary are unlikely to approach new stimuli at all, 
as they are not emboldened by a group, which is likely the same reason chimpanzee were the least concerned, because they comprise large groups and are less likely to be afraid in mass. The study cites a different study that notes that orangutan will even stop using well-established corridors of travel if new stimuli is observed, making wild orangutans, quote, strikingly difficult to catalog with any field equipment. Bonobo spent the most time on camera, interacting with the camera, indicating that they were the most unsure of the three species studied. This is supported by them only touching the game cameras 3% of the time that they were curious about the cameras. And gorilla were simply seen the least, which is interesting because they comprised the most individuals, though they are the least mobile on a daily basis, so that would make sense that they were recorded the least. To me, the most important data can be condensed into the comparison of the total image capture events in contrast to the amount of times that the great apes were reacting to the cameras. 82% of the time Bonobo were on camera, they were reacting to it. Chimpanzee reacted to the cameras 25% of the time they were on camera. And Gorilla reacted to the camera 58% of the time. All species in the study acknowledged that they were in the presence of something to be skeptical of, which is interesting. Of course, the study has no way of quantifying how many times the cameras were avoided altogether, as the cameras obviously wouldn't have recorded anything. This alone demonstrates that great apes rapidly assess novelty in their environment. They notice game cameras and have specific tendencies regarding them which for some reason is surprising to many. Here are some of the study's conclusions. Camera traps represent novel objects for all great apes in this study. In general, young individuals explored camera traps for longer relative to mature males and females. Females tended to look longer. Great apes accompanied by more individuals looked for a shorter duration at camera traps. This may suggest that individuals risked being less vigilant when they were accompanied by more individuals. This research suggests that the dynamics of novelty responses and animal curiosity are more complex than previously understood. Results suggest that species-typical reactions and habituation to novelty should be considered when designing wildlife surveys, such as including a familiarization phase. Curiosity may not always promote overt love of new stimuli, since animals can also obtain information about novel objects via more subtle behaviors, such as distanced visual exploration. Fear of new things may win out over curiosity. In short, all great ape species recognize and react to novel stimuli such as game cameras. Not only do they recognize them, but they have species-specific tendencies regarding interaction. Not quite a protocol, but something like it. And if new objects can be noticed, they can also be avoided. A brain with a similar capacity as humans, but function more like the known great apes, would result in a creature with a far greater command of its environment than its contemporaries. Even the known great apes are demonstrably in a constant state of interpreting their surroundings and recognizing novelty stimulus, ostensibly in an effort to reduce exposure to risk. Imagine a creature with a brain capacity more like ours, but a function like the apes in this study. Most of us use around 50 tools within an hour of waking. We don't even think about them. It's second nature to us for lack of a better term. Sometimes we sift through infinite data to see what we should supposedly worry about for the day. Oftentimes, we operate 5,000 pounds of machine at a high rate of speed. And sometimes, we even question why we're here at all. So imagine a creature that worries about none of these things, unencumbered by the knowledge of our daily tasks, and instead, prioritizes recognizing novelty and reducing risk. A brain with a function like the great apes, but a capacity more like our brain, would be unequaled and extraordinary. 
in every sense of those words. It would hypothetically be something that we as humans may be ill-equipped to compete with, in their given environments, at least. We're talking about a lot of brain mass, and a lot of brain power. The question is how that power is applied. If a camera can be recognized every single time, then surely it can be avoided every single time. It can no longer be questioned that great apes react to new objects in their environment, and that fear or skepticism of new things may win out over curiosity. The art of tracking is the art of looking for disturbances, looking for anything out of place. So not only the cameras themselves, but the disturbance of the researchers setting them up may be the equivalent of red flags. Every bent blade of grass and every broken spider web may be glaringly obvious to something that entirely lives in the moment. If this study seemed complicated or confusing, that's because it is. It's complex stuff, with a lot of different conclusions to draw. But I tried my best to summarize it as concisely and sensibly as possible. Anyway, I'll put some links in the video description. Make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, thanks an awful lot for listening.